In this video, we'll describe how we produce these 17 herringbone and rope design inlay strips. This video is a little longer than many of my other videos, since I cover a lot of different techniques and design ideas in this video. Therefore, I'm listing an outline of the various sections in this video, should you choose to advance to a particular section in this video. Over the years, I've made a lot of furniture in which I use thin wood inlay strips to accent my pieces, such as a small jewelry box. In the past, I purchased my inlay strips, but now I'm making my own unique wood inlay strips for all my projects. Recently, I posted a YouTube video in which I described production of some thin wood inlay strips for furniture and also for the perfecting strips or guitars. The inlays in this video are fairly simple, just made from thin parallel strips of woods of contrasting colors. This video is part one of a series on planning on the production of some more complex thin wood inlay strip designs. In this video, we're making some herringbone and rope design thin wood inlays. Some of these inlay strips will be in a half inch to three quarter inch wide range, but I'll also be making some thinner strips that could be used for perfecting strips for guitars. These are the woods I'll be using for the uh, center portions for the herringbone and rope design patterns for these inlay strips. Uh, first of all, we're using this piece of zebra wood. This zebra wood has a lot of nice fine grain, which should show up nicely in the center section of the herringbone pattern. And because the board's so wide, it should be an easy setup uh, for making these uh, inlay center portions. Next, I'll be using this piece of wangi. Again, it has a lot of nice fine grain, which should show up nicely in the uh, herringbone uh, patterns. Uh, this is some leftover uh, laminates from uh, a dizzy bowl, one of my inlay projects. And I had a long strip and I cut it into four pieces and glued it together to create this pattern and I'll cut this at an angle to create my inlay sections. And this is a brand new piece that I just put together. It has some two pieces of uh, bubinga, about 360 of an inch thick. And then I have some very fine layers of maple, paduk, uh, yellow heart, and uh, catalogs next to that. And then another section repeating that same pattern. And I'll glue this up. And I'll cut this into four sections and glue it up much like I did this to create a wider strip. And then I'll make my uh, inlay sections for the herringbone pattern from this. So that gives me four different patterns to use for the center portions for these uh, herringbone and rope design uh, projects. To outline the center sections, I'll be using accent strips sliced from various woods, such as the wood shown here. You know, maple, catalogs, yellow heart, red heart, walnut, purple heart, paduk, and others. I'll be slicing these boards into thin strips as thin as 10 thousandths of an inch to outline the center sections of the inlay strips. We once again use the AccuSlice system on the bandsaw to slice thin boards that were between 10 and 70 thousandths of an inch thick. These thin wood boards will be used for both the accent borders for these inlay strips as well as the multi-layer herringbone and rope design center sections of these inlay strips. We start out with a variety of naturally colored woods of various contrasting colors, such as paduk, yellow heart, red heart, walnut, maple, and others. Each of these boards was one and a half inch thick by one inch wide by 30 to 6, 36 inches long. We used a 10 teeth per inch bandsaw blade to cut the thin wood slices. The AccuSlice system permits the accurate slicing of wood strips with no bandsaw blade drift issues. For additional details on exactly how these strips were sliced on the AccuSlice systems on the bandsaw, please view the previous YouTube video on the production of the straight pattern inlay strips and perfecting strips for guitars. This video is described in the description section of this video. I don't normally sand my strips that I'm going to glue on my board sander, but because these for, are for uh, these inlay strips, and I got a lot of small pieces, a lot of real tight joints. I'm just running through the sander to very lightly take off one or two thousand just to uh, top off some of the uh, saw marks that are very, very fine here. So I'm starting off with boards that are, these are 53, 54, between 53 and 54 thousandths of an inch thick. I set my board sander to a depth of around 50 thousandths of an inch and sand both sides of the strips without changing the depth setting on the board sander. So I took off maybe one two thousandths at the most, just enough to get the fuzzies off. I can still feel the you know, minor saw marks, but uh, it's a little bit smoother, just uh, sanded up the, uh, the high points.
To produce a multi-layer laminate board for the herringbone and rope design center inlay strips, I need to glue together the thin wood strips that were just sliced on the AccuSlice system. The wood strips are arranged in the desired pattern and then glued together using the glue jig system. A type on 3 glue was used to glue the strips together by applying glue to both sides of the wood strips, then placing the glued strips into the glue jig system between the two aluminum angle irons and then clamping the boards together using C-clamps to squeeze out the excess glue. After allowing to dry for at least four hours, the glued up boards were then cleaned up on a joiner planer and edge sander to remove the excess glue and prepare the laminate board for slicing at 45 degrees in the next step. I'm ready to cut this piece of zebra wood into uh, slices and I'll be cutting slices at a 45 degree angle and I'm making a bunch of thin slices between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch wide. And these will be used for the center sections of the herringbone and the rope tooth designs for these uh, strips that I'll be making. There's a number of ways I could, I could cut this board. I could cut it on a table saw. The problem with the table saw is a curve for the table saw blades an eighth of an inch. Whereas the band saw is only 45,000. So using the band saw is much more efficient. You lose a lot less wood. And then even on the band saw, there's various techniques you could use. You could use a simple, you know, square in a miter slot. Uh, it may not be as accurate to do uh, those cuts, but that would work. Uh, I could also use the Accu sled, the Accu wedge, and in this case, I decided to tell you use the uh, Accu slot. And I selected the Accu slot because it supports the board on both sides of the bandsaw blade. So we'll see how it works. So I have this set up. I have it aligned so my blade goes through the center of my board, and. Uh, I set the blade up that it's close to this outer edge, but not quite touching it. So when pieces kick off, they won't get caught down in that slot. So that's why I set the blade close to that, that left, uh, left side of the, uh, the slot of the table here. Okay, my Aki set's all set up. And I put this board so I don't go, so I can cut through the board, but I don't go into the fence. And I set my stop up so that I don't cut into the fence on the band saw. So that's all set up. I'll do my initial cut to cut a 45 degree angle on here. And I'm of course clamping my board down so it doesn't move. That way I get accurate cuts when I'm cutting this. So I'm using two clamps to hold the board down. And I am using a laser beam to show me exactly where I'm cutting so I don't cut into this clamp. I'll just clamp close but not touching where the blade's going to cut through. Now on this bandsaw I have a half inch wide blade, 18 teeth per inch. Uh, this is just a blade that was left on for my previous project. It may be too fine of a blade so I'll see. I may switch to a coarser blade. Uh, we'll see how this works out. And I have my stop set up that I don't go through the whole the board the whole way. And I see a problem right now that stops in the way of the board. So that's got to be moved. Okay, so I just made a new stop. And this was just a round uh, thumb nut with a, a screw that goes in the uh, slot and a spacer. And it's just the right height that it hits the table, but it's below the top of the table. So I'm going to go the whole way through, not touching my carriage or my rail, but uh, putting the whole way through the board. And I'm going to stop right there. That'll work fine. So now I'm ready to cut my board. So let me start off by cutting some strips. Uh, let's try cutting some an eighth of an inch wide. And I want to cut a bunch of strips the same thickness so I can use my stop here to uh, set my thickness. So all my boards now will be exactly the same thickness. Here's my first two strips which could be glued together you know back to back to make a long strip or like this to make my herringbone pattern or just a single strip to make a rope pattern. So 
So we make that a double strip, leave the other one about a quarter of inch wide, but just about the right thickness for what I want to do. Put, I'll put some, you know, accent strips on the outside, and then continue cutting additional strips on the bandsaw. Okay, and there is a uh, 12 strips. Take my first inlay. So I'm gluing some of these up, you know, lengthwise, to make a long strip, and then making the herringbone and rope patterns. So, so in the same manner I cut the zebra wood board, I'll be cutting this piece of wangi board. So first of all, I'll cut my piece to get my 45 degree angle. I'll cut some strips about an eighth of an inch long. Yeah, I got 10 strips off of that. And now I'll cut the rest of the board off with some, uh, some wire pieces. So next I have my laminate board. And same thing, I'll be cutting pieces uh, and it's about eighth of an inch wide for this also. And there we got 25 pieces out of that. that make a nice pattern for a bowl. Next I need to glue up my pieces together to make, you know, one long strip. And these are the pieces I cut on the bandsaw. And they already have a 45 degree angle on both ends, uh, which is a nice scarf joint. Easy to, uh, to glue and it's a pretty strong joint. Uh, but I need to set these up that I can glue these, get them aligned, and clamp them. So this is the setup I made. It's nothing more than a piece of uh, plastic HD high density polyethylene plastic, about a quarter inch thick, about four inches wide. And I actually screwed it to the bench with an overhang. And I put this uh, piece of brass in here as a straight edge, so I can take these pieces and I can line them up and glue them and I have a nice straight edge for my pieces going together. And this is a piece I just finished gluing up. See, it glued up pretty nicely. I had this overhang on the table so I can use my clamps to clamp it in place. And where I have a joint, I'll be gluing those joints. And this is a piece of plastic, which I can go over that and keep everything nice and flat and straight as, it, as the glue dries. I just put a small amount of glue on the 145 degree angle piece. Make sure I have good coverage. Push the board in until I get a nice tight joint. Make sure it's tight against the straight edge. Keeps everything nice, thick, everything's nice and straight. And clamp this in position. Wipe off the excess glue. Put my again. Yeah, it's a plastic piece that so doesn't stick to the uh, plastic. And then clamp it. I should have a nice tight joint. And just keep going down and do the rest of these pieces the same way. dry for about an hour. That's fast, quick, and easy to do, and they're nice to be nice and straight. Joints be nice and flat. And when you sand it a little bit, it cleans up like that. Another piece I did, another one of the sets. And it's been drying for about an hour, so I can remove the clamps. After these strips been glued together, I need to run these through my uh, board sander just to get rid of the, uh, the glue marks and, and level out the surfaces. Take, just taking off, you know, one or two thousandths, taking off very, very little. But handling these very delicately because they are very fragile. 
I set the board sander to the approximate depth of the uh, piece to just take off, you know, one or two thousandths. And then I reverse the board and take it to the second side without changing the depth setting at all on the board sander. The multi-layer laminate boards are sanded in the same manner. The center sections for these inlay strips, for these herringbone and bone design inlays I'm making, are all finished. I have a variety of different materials here. I have some uh, zebra wood, again cut at 45 degrees and pieced together to make longer strips. I have some wangi. I have some multi-layer laminate strips, different patterns and designs. And now these are ready to combine with some of the thin strips that I made previously to create some unique inlay patterns for some of these uh, inlay strips we're making. Uh, much like I did for this one here, this was some of that zebra wood in the inside. And then I put a, a maple layer on the outside of that and then a catalog layer on top of that. So that creates a, what, a five layer piece of inlay strip. Now this will be put back on the bandsaw and I'll cut off 50,000 inch thick pieces to give me my inlay pieces. So I'm ready to take my various strips here and glue some of these thin strips to the outside. These are the thin strips, I call them the uh, accent strips or, or, or uh, outlining strips for these uh, inlay strips and I have a variety of different woods you know everything from catalogs to purple heart to red heart maple all different kinds of woods of different colors and contrast and I made several thicknesses of these I made a 25 thousandths a 50 thousandths and I'll consider making some other thinner sections if I need them and I'll be taking these various strips adding them to the inside of two of these put together or on the outside to create some unique patterns. And this is what I'm in the process of doing. This again is uh, two layers of the uh, zebra wood and in the middle I glued a piece of maple and now on the outside we're putting two more layers of maple and red heart. So that'll create a seven layer inlay strip. So these could be glued up using my glue jig but these thin pieces uh, probably work better using this jig here which I use for gluing up some of the thin pieces. I can just add glue to these various layers, you know, put them in here and, and clamp them down to create the uh, needed pattern. So that's what I'll be doing uh, to glue these up. So that's the next process is gluing up some of these inlays to create some uh, multi-layer inlay strips with the herringbone and bone design, uh, design ideas. Now I have a couple of different widths here that I set up. Most of the inlays I'm doing will be these thin, these thin strips, which are about, I just learned, a little under inch, inch wide. But I have some of these wider strips. And the reason I made these wider strips, when I'm making um, a herringbone design, and I want those patterns to line up exactly, it's, it's pretty difficult to get those to be exactly perfect. So the easiest way to do that is to create a strip like this, and then cut it down the middle and then fold the two over top one another. That has the best chance of being a perfect alignment of the various pieces. Because as you're gluing these up, you know, any little change in, you know, the glue angle, how it tightly is glued, or even inconsistencies in the widths of some of the pieces can create a uh, difference in patterns that they won't match up. So I might get a, a set like this, which matches up at one end, but by the time you get down to the other end, uh, they're off. And it's only off by, you know, you know, two or three thousandths, but it's enough you can see it being off. So by making these strips like that, cutting them in half, folding it two halves over top of each other, they'll be more accurate. So that's why I made these wider strips here. So what I do here is I, I take some pieces and I just play around with ideas to see what looks good. So here I have two pieces of the uh, zebra wood, and I'm gonna put a center portion in here, and I decide to put a piece of this catalog in the center which is dark, a dark wood. So now I have two pieces of the uh, zebra wood going in opposite directions. And with that piece of 
catalogs in the middle. And then I'm going to put some pieces on the outside. I just try different colors. You know, I could put uh, a piece of maple. Looks good. You know, uh, there's some yellow heart. Uh, that's a little bit, I don't like that. You know, some red heart might work. Uh, I have some uh, purple heart. That looks pretty good, but I think I like the maple the best. So I'm going to glue two pieces of maple, one on each side. I want this to be a pretty thin strip, so I, that's all it's going to be is just, you know, five layers. And each of these layers is uh, 25,000 of an inch thick. I've pieced together a bunch of design ideas here uh, based on the, the uh, herringbone patterns I had and also the thin uh, outlining strips. So combining different colors and different numbers of uh, layers to get some unique patterns. These are just a few of the patterns that I'm putting together that I'll be gluing up. Here's one. My plan is to make a bunch of different unique designs, each one different from one another. So in total for this video, I'm producing 17 different design patterns of herringbone and uh, rope design inlays. By using different wood species and different thicknesses of woods, the number of design ideas is infinite. I'm ready for the glue up of this set. This is a pretty nice set that I'll be gluing up here. It's uh, three, four, five, six, seven, nine layers. Once again, I'm using Type On 3 glue for the process, and I apply glue to both surfaces of the pieces that are being glued together. I'm making sure that these surfaces are perfectly uh, covered. And I do apply glue on a wax paper so I don't get it over the table. And then as I uh, put the glue on, I tack the two pieces together and then push them down to kind of tack them in place and then continue to add pieces until everything's been uh, glued up together. After glue has been applied to the last strip of wood, I then put in my jig against the brass bar and then put a piece of scrap MDF on top and use spring clamps to clamp everything in place. And I put spring clamps the entire distance um, of the piece that I'm being glued together to, to make sure I get good clamping of the entire surfaces and squeezing out all the excess glue. I allow the laminate glue boards to dry for at least uh, two hours and then I take them to my edge sander and sand off the excess glue and smooth out the edges. Okay, after sanding the surface flush, that's the result. And that paduk and yellow heart next to one another really looks nice. So again, this will be sliced into thin slivers for inlay patterns. To produce the perfectly matched herringbone patterns, I use the wider strips. To glue up the wider laminate uh, boards and inlay strips, I do use my glue jig system, which works much better for these wider pieces of wood. And again, I use the same processes that was used in the previous video on the uh, inlay straight pattern pieces. For more details on this glue jig system, see the previous video on the uh, inlay pieces and purfling uh, pieces for guitars. After these boards are dry, I take them to my edge sander and stand off the excess glue. The glued up laminate boards will then be sliced in half using my modeling saw. This is my multi-layer laminate strip in the middle. And I have two thin layers of maple on top of that. And this is the wide board, which I'm going to cut in half. So when I fold these two halves together, these patterns will match up exactly. So I'm using my modeling saw to cut this. I could cut this on the band saw. But I'm going to use this modeling saw with a small carbide tooth blade. That should make a nice cut. So I have it set, centered, pretty much centered in the middle. And we should be ready to cut. Now I can fold these together. And I'll put a piece of dark wood in the middle here. And those should match up exactly. These are the two pieces I cut in half. And I'll be putting this piece of red heart in the middle. 
And what I'll be trying to do here is match these up so that the patterns match up exactly, you know, perpendicular to one another. So I'll just be gluing up the three pieces here, and then I'll be adding more pieces later. But I just want to get these two lined up accurately in this first section. Again, I add uh, Type Bond 3 glue to all the surfaces that are being glued together, making sure the surfaces are perfectly covered, and then tacking the pieces together. What I'm doing here initially is just setting the glue so that these pieces don't slip and slide as I'm clamping it, but I will put it in my jig in a few minutes. After the glue's been set for about a minute, I then remove these clamps and put it back in my clamping jig and add clamps the entire length of the board to clamp everything thoroughly in place and squeeze out the excess glue. So that's all, that all glued up now. Now I'll glue on the final two layers of red heart and maple on the outside. I have all my laminated herringbone and bone design pieces all glued up. Now I'm ready to cut the thin slices off to make my inlays. I'll be using a jig I used in a previous video to do this. I have my first uh, inlay piece, which is my herringbone pattern. Uh, and I'll be gluing this to this inch and a half tall piece of MDF. Because I'm going to be using the AccuSlide 2 to run these on the bandsaw to cut off the thin slices. And each of these slivers will be 50,000 of an inch thick. So I'm, once again, I'm using the same jig I used in the previous video with the offset clamps to, you know, glue this and then clamp it to the MDF. It's just a quick, easy clamping system to attach the uh, two pieces together. Just put a bead of glue on here. This has a cleat here to, to hold this in place. The laminated board is uh, attached to the sacrificial fence and then using the offset clamps, applying just enough pressure to squeeze out the excess glue and give you a nice tight joint. I'm just making sure it's square. I let that dry for about an hour before I put it on the bandsaw. Yeah, this has been drying for about an hour, so this is done. It's all set to cut on the bandsaw. We'll do another one here. It's a thinner board. Okay, and let that dry. I have my first strip here ready to go, uh, and I mounted it on my AccuSled 2. So this is the same procedure I used for the previous video on making the uh, perfect and inlays uh, for guitars. Uh, again, using my AccuSled 2 carriage with the one and a half inch MDF board and then my uh, board I'm cutting, my laminate board with the uh, herringbone pattern is glued to that uh, one and three quarter inch piece of MDF. And I just squared it off, I cut a piece off to give me a flat surface. So I'm now ready to cut my first piece of inlay. I want my inlays to be 50,000 inch thick. So I just finished making a cut here, so I need one 
turn of 50 thousandths for the curve for the blade, and then another full turn will give me an inlay 50 thousandths of an inch thick. I can make these thicker if I want, but 50 thousandths of an inch should be enough. I can put my laser on so I can see where I'm cutting. And I am using a half inch wide blade, 18 teeth per inch. And as I'm cutting, you notice I'll be cutting slowly. The slower you cut, the smoother the cut. So I cut pretty slowly. Again, this video is sped up for viewing purposes. I'm actually cutting at one-fifth the speed that's actually shown on the screen. And there's my first inlay strip from that board. And again, this is a herringbone pattern. And that's a beautiful pattern for that inlay strip. That'll make a nice strip for inlaying on some furniture. So I'll continue cutting some more pieces here. In the same procedure, one turn for the curve of the blade and then one turn for 50 thousandths of an inch. So I'll just keep cutting a bunch of pieces, repeating that process. I got a total of 14 strips off of that piece of wood, and that is a beautiful inlay. Now this is the next strip I'll be cutting. And it's again multicolored inlay strips in the uh, rope pattern design, and I have layers of maple and uh, red heart outlining the uh, center strip. I once again attach the laminate board and sacrificial fence to the AccuSled too and cut slices of boards about 50 thousandths of an inch thick. I got seven inlay strips from that board. And again, these are the rope pattern design with alternating colors of wood in the center. And then the outer strips are a strip of red heart and maple. So each of these seven strips is 50 thousandths of an inch thick. And then the last strip I cut off there, I just had a little bit of scrap left. This piece is actually five thousandths of an inch. It's like a toilet paper, real, real thin. But that just, again, shows the precision of the system for slicing boards. I can cut a thin board like that five thousandths of an inch thick. The surface of these pieces are pretty good. They really don't need sand it. Uh, but I got a little, little bit of a burr on the edge where it kicked out the end of the bandsaw blade, which needs to be cut off or sanded off. So I measured these and they measure out at right around 55 thousandths. Yeah, right around 55 thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna run these through the board sander and take off maybe one or two thousandths, just enough to uh, get rid of this burr on the end and maybe smooth out some of the additional saw marks, but it doesn't need much. They're pretty smooth, uh, just as they are. I have my board sander set to a thickness of about 50 thousandths of an inch, and I run the strip through the board sander on both sides without changing the depth on the sander. And this is the finished inlay strip with the herringbone pattern. These are the 17 herringbone and rope design laminated boards that were created for this video. Each of these laminated boards is different from one another. The center sections consist of either one or two of the 45 degree angled strips. On the outside surfaces of each of these strips are either two or three thin strips of contrasting woods to accent and outline the center sections. For the herringbone patterns I used two of the 45 degree angled strips. Between these two angled strips, I inserted one to three thin strips of contrasting colored woods to separate and provide for additional details to the two angled strips. The number of designs that can be created by using different woods, different thicknesses of woods, and different orientation of wood layers is infinite. I did slice four of these 
laminated boards up to uh, inlay strips. Each of these strips 50,000 an inch thick. This is probably one of the nicest ones of the of the series. So these two are both the herringbone design and these two are both the rope design. The remaining strips will be cut up as I need them for future projects. These strips could also be used for uh, segments for segment wood turning. So I may use some of them for that purpose also in the future. And I will be taking some of these to trade shows that we do in the future to uh, demonstrate the cutting in these thin strips by using the AccuSlay system on the bandsaw. This concludes this video of making these herringbone and rope design inlay strips. Be sure to watch the previous video in which I described the production of these straight lined inlay strips. I went into a little more detail in that video on how these are actually made. Uh, some of that detail maybe it was shortened in this video in order to reduce the length of the video. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please give us a call or send us an email. We'll be happy to talk with you.